Okay, we're good to go. Okay, welcome. So I'm here with uh, Rob Jorgensen. Rob is the uh, Chief Operating Officer at Southwest Plastic and Metrics Valve. Welcome, Rob. Thank you, Don. Glad so, to be here. Rob, tell us a little bit about what Metrics Valve is in Southwest Plastics. Okay, uh, so Metrics Valve is a uh, uh, water regulating valve company. We make um, valves specialized for heat exchange in uh, large water-cooled HVAC units. Uh, you'd find our valves in you know big high-rise buildings, hotels, uh, and also aboard uh, uh, commercial ships as well as uh, U.S. Navy ships. Mm. Neat. And then uh, plastics company, uh, Southwest Plastics. Uh, we uh, it's a custom plastics injection molding company. Um, we do third-party manufacturing for other companies that uh, have the need for um, uh, plastics parts, and where they're where the supplier. Great. And where are you located? Uh, Glendora, California. And how did you get into this line of business? Uh, it's a, a long story. Let's hear uh, a short part of that. <laughs> <laughs> the short, the the short part of the story. Um, you know, as a kid, I always was looking for a way to to make money and stuff. And so my dad and uh, my uncle Doug, they were happy to put me to work. Uh, I think I spent most of my summers and plenty of time after school and high school at uh, Metrics Valve, uh, putting valves together and working in the assembly and test department. And, um, you know, then, then I went away to college. I went to school up in California, uh, in Vallejo at the uh, California Maritime Academy mm -hmm. and uh, uh, went for a different career path for a while. I was a navigator on uh, uh, U.S. Navy supply ships for about five years. Nice. Yeah, it was a it was a fun time. Yeah, uh, traveled all around the world and uh, met a lot of great people, saw a lot of cool places, and um, then I then I met my wife uh, or my the woman that I wanted to marry, and right. uh, I wanted to settle down and stop being a, uh, you know being away for so long. Right, and uh, so I talked to my dad about you know um, how he felt about having me come work for the family business. And he was delighted. He was, he was delighted. Yeah. And, uh, he, he welcomed me and so did Doug with open arms. And uh, now he rec uh, refers to me as his, uh, retirement plan. <laughs> so, <laughs> you are his retirement that's plan. Right, that's yeah. right. So just, so, just to be clear, cause I don't think everyone knows, mm -hmm. uh, Southwest plastic and metrics valve, they were both started by your grandfather. Yes. So, um, they weren't started by my grandfather, but he acquired metrics valve in, I believe 1964. Okay. And, uh, he, he operated metrics, uh, making, um, you know, various types of water regulating valves for, oh, uh, in, until the mid seventies. And he hired my dad, my dad came on board and together they acquired Southwest plastics. So for a while, Southwest plastics was operating out of the same building as metrics. And as that operation grew, um, it went to Montebello. Uh, and then I believe it went to where it is now in Glendora. Gotcha. So um, you're third generation going into the, into this business. Then. Yes. Third, third generation. And, uh, happy and proud to be here. So Rob, can you tell us uh, what are some of the issues with being a third generation? And by the way, I'm a third generation also, or I was also, so I, I oh, feel good. your pain. <laughs> but I know there are certain issues with dealing with your father, in your case, your uncle and your father, and yeah. then your siblings and your grandfather. I mean, tell me about all of the family dynamics involved that you've experienced. Well, it, it's, it's, uh, it's complicated, you know. Um, you want to, I want to do right by everybody. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the main thing. And so mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of, a lot of pressure. Um, the heart, the hardest thing is not to, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, mm -hmm. but I also want to put my own, my own touch on things. And so, um, you know, I've, I've been with the companies for about five years now. So the first few years were really just, you know, not changing a thing and, and learning as much as I, as much as I could um, in, in biting my tongue at, at some points. Right. Um, but now I'm a lot more comfortable and, uh, I don't feel like I'm stepping on toes so much as I'm kind of, uh, you know, building out what I plan to have the company, how I plan to have the companies operate for the next, my generation anyways. Right. Right. You so, know, so, you know, with company structure, organization, new hires, you know, my, my team, I'm bringing my team on. You're bringing board. your team on. Yeah. 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 Did your, how is your, how's your dad and your uncle 
uh, coping with the fact that you're bringing in your own team? Is that going well, or could they relate to it because they did the same thing? Or tell us a little bit about that. Uh, they're unbelievably supportive. Good. Um, they're. Uh, I think they trust my my decision making mm -hmm. ability, and uh, I. The couple of key people that I've brought on, or the, the way I've moved things around, I think they've seen it work out well so far. Mm -hmm. So it gives them confidence in the fact that I'm pro I'm doing the right thing. Great. Um, but yeah, re re replacing key people is extremely difficult. Um, yeah, tell us about that. I mean, you, we're dealing in California in a manufacturing sector and in Glendora. How uh, how difficult is it to find new people or to uh, replace people as they retire or just staff up? Yeah, it's tough. Um, that perfect person, I don't. Uh, we haven't found them, so we have to sacrifice at some point on their resume, whether it be experience or 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 whatever. What and do you mean? What? Do, tell me more about that. What do you mean? Well, I don't. A drop-in replacement doesn't exist for oh, what, right. for what we do. <clears throat> right. um, you so need to train people. We need to train people. And I, when I'm looking for somebody to hire, I look for somebody with a good attitude above all else, somebody that's going to get along with the team mm -hmm. and somebody that wants to learn, that mm -hmm. wants to be there. Um, you know, they if they don't know everything about the business or about their specific position, that's... Uh, not not ideal, but it, we can work around that if they have the right aptitude and attitude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, that that's really what I focus on is aptitude and attitude. Are you finding it hard in this environment in uh, in California now or in, in the in the two thousand nineteens to find people? Or tell me your experience with even getting people in the door. Um, it's challenging. Uh, I I don't know if it's uh, there's just better better work out there or maybe manufacturing isn't what people see themselves doing anymore but finding entry-level positions is uh is tough especially when you know there's uh you know <laughs> greener pastures yeah uh you know maybe even like right next door to us right you know at starbucks and right across the street i i don't know i know they're a great company to work for uh and they might outshine us just by a little bit. Right, right, right. So you have a you have a constant need for for bringing in people, and you have a great. I mean, the company's been around for what sixty years or more. I mean, a good yeah. good family company to work for. I imagine some of your employees have worked there for quite some time, haven't they? We have. Yeah, our average length of employment over both companies is about fifteen years. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's yeah. good. We're going to be celebrating a. 45th anniversary for one of our employees at metrics wow. uh next year that's fantastic yeah it's really exciting yeah and um we actually just hired his nephew oh or, i'm sorry excuse me we just hired his son-in-law yeah who's training to replace him when he when he was ready to retire oh fantastic so that that that's one way we navigated around the the hiring problems hire the siblings of people who already work for you that's right <laughs> yeah, it's a true family business a true family business yeah yeah oh that's great that's good well rob what are some of the other challenges that you can think of that you've had to face either in manufacturing or challenges with a uh, uh a manufacturing company or a family business um well this is probably my own doing but in the recent years maybe biting off more more than I can chew. Uh, I find myself spread pretty thin between each company and uh, doing a bit of a juggling act. But, um, you know, as my professional career, uh, you know, progresses and I, I learn more on how to deal with these things, I, I'm able to kind of put out some of the fires that come up right. uh, more effectively. Right. And, uh, and, and I'm able to delegate better too. You know, I, I can't be in two places at once. And so, you know, learning those skills on how to how to delegate and then trusting somebody to, to do something in your absence is, you know, that's uh, it's a that's that, a, that's a skill. That's an acquired skill. An acquired skill. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what um, about your your the work you did running a ship? You were on board a you were an officer aboard a ship for five years. I was. Was yeah. there uh, was there an experience there that you brought to running a manufacturing company? I, I have leadership skills, absolutely. You know, I was young, young. I, I stepped on uh, on my first ship as an officer 
as a as a third mate um, when I was 23 years old. And wow. I, yeah, and I had a, a, a watch team uh, underneath me, you know, a lookout, helmsman, you know, roving, roving lookout patrol. And then uh, during fire and emergency drills, I, I had, you know, 25 guys that were reporting to me. And uh, that, that talk about being thrown in the fire, <laughs> trying to get, you know, seasoned sailors to, to listen to you when you're, you know, green, a greenhorn yeah. right out of school. Um, I think that's the best experience. Uh, it'll, you know, yeah. it, cha- it changed my life. Yeah, I, I, I've heard that my, my, uh, my dad was in ROTC when uh, World War II broke out. Oh, wow. And so they sent him over to be captain of a minesweeper when he was 20 years old. Holy crap. And he was in charge of 76 men that he couldn't even drink with them because he was a, yeah. it wasn't legal age <laughs> to drink anymore. He said, boy, he grew up in a grew up fast. hurry. Yeah. with that yeah you in really those circumstances do. like that yeah yeah so i can imagine you brought the same kind of great experience back to the back to metrics and to southwest of what you learned on the bridge yeah. and dealing with men yeah ma- management team management, team. management team. style and leadership abilities and, mm-hmm. and all that yeah yeah, I, yeah that, uh, cal maritime and going to sea changed my life yeah i bet it did what about the future of Southwest and Metrics? I mean, these are these are old line manufacturing firms, uh, and you know, making valves mm-hmm. in the United States in manufacturing. Whereas you look toward the next generation, like you said, of this company, these companies. Where do you see it going, or how do you see it changing, or what do you what do you what do you think the future is going to look like? Uh, there's always going to be a need for for water regulating valves. Um, and while requirements change, we're doing a good job of constantly um, redesigning old products, designing new products to, um, you know, meet meet these new requirements. One of them specifically is uh, old, older refrigerants are being uh, outlawed, essentially, no, no longer manufactured. And so we're changing our valves over to work with this uh, R410A, which has a, a higher condensing pressure. So I don't want to get too technical. No, don't get too technical. Don't get too technical. <laughs> You're going to lose me and where's the yeah, audience here? <laughs> uh, it, it, the, the actuator that, that tells the valve to open and close needs to operate at a higher pressure now. And okay. it, it's a complete redesign of, of the valve. Okay. Um, and we're doing a real, a real good job at um, you know, getting out ahead of these new regulations and making valves that are, are going to work with that R410A refrigerant. Now, is that part of how you're keeping, uh, everyone reads about how manufacturing is going overseas, as much, the labor cost is much less overseas. You have a higher labor cost working in the US and higher operating costs in general. How are you able to compete with that overseas market in a, in a low tech manufacturing environment where, you're, where you are? Well, it's a it's a good question. Um, our valves are undoubtedly uh, a more expensive than our main competitor. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, in talking with our customers and, uh, you know, going out on trips and, and visiting, you know, users in the field and stuff, that our customers prefer our valve because of the quality mm. and the accessibility to it. Got it. So you your know, customers are willing to pay a little bit more because they they're are. not going to break down. That's they can right. count on them and That's all right. of that. That's right. It costs a lot of money to have a valve replaced in a system when, you know, if a, our competitor valve breaks down after a couple of years, heaven forbid they have to repipe their system to right. accommodate a, a different design or, or what have you. Um, they just soon have our valve you know, set and forget, stay in the, in the line for many, many years. Right. Good. And you're maintaining that quality through certain quality control yeah. aspects. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We've got a, a, a three-man quality control department. Um, at both companies? Uh, it's at Metrics Valve. At Metrics. Okay. Yeah. And is there a, you have a certif- uh like an ISO? Um, so shifting over to Southwest, we have a, a great quality control department. It's uh, a, a two-man quality control department. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Part of that is maintaining, you know, obviously the quality of our parts that leave the shop, make sure they're on spec. But um, also, uh, our quality control manager Dan um, got us through ISO about ten years ago, and then just recently, this past year, got us our aerospace certificate. Right. So um, yeah, we're we're really excited about uh, going after new markets with that. I'll bet. I'll bet. So Rob, let me go back to how do you spend? You got you're running two companies, two companies of what? How many employees in both operations? 
Uh, about 30 and 25. So so you've got a good team of people. And, and I know from being there, you're about oh, four blocks away from each other or so, maybe That's right. a little longer than that. So how do you spend your time between the two companies? How do you decide where you should be? Um, usually it's by what's going on that day. Mm -hmm. Like if a new mold is scheduled to be delivered over at Southwest, excuse me, mm -hmm. um, I want to be there for the delivery and then also for the setup of the new mold. Okay. Um, and then also, you know, what meetings are scheduled where, with, mm -hmm. you know, if I have customers coming over to metrics and I'll be at metrics or okay. vice versa at Southwest. So every day is just, it just it, depends on the day. It, it kind of depends on the day, but like, if there is a typical day, it's I, I spend a couple hours in the morning over at Metrics, get through my admin and do a walk through the shop, mm -hmm. make sure I visit with everybody and see what issues are going on, if any, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of, you know, just have a presence. And then I'll, uh, you know, late morning, early afternoon, I'll head over to Southwest for pretty much the rest of the day. Right. Good. Good. Um, Good. OK. Um and in dealing with your um, uh, operations guy, you got good people at Southwest, good people at Metrics. Excellent people. And, and you just, you, they, they can do the job. You're there to really coach them and move them along and, and help them succeed. Yeah, yeah, and make sure they have what they need to, you know, make their, make their job easier. Great. Good, good. You know, before we uh, conclude this mm -hmm. uh, podcast, can you, is there anything that you, can you give us an example of how either one of the two companies has really solved a great solution for one of your customers? I mean, how your products have helped a customer of yours solve a problem that was unique? Well, I'm sure. Uh, actually, it's a really cool story. Uh, just in this last year, we've been working on a development project with a company called... Um, U.S. Ordnance. They're mm -hmm. uh, they're a small arms manufacturing company for our our armed forces. Okay. Um, they teamed up with Colt to make a you know Colt, Colt, Colt manufacturing the, Colt the firearms. Gun. Uh -huh. and, yeah. Uh, Colt is making a reproduction M16 uh, for Vietnam vets. I guess it's maybe for nostalgic purposes or collectors, probably for collectors. Right. And. That that first edition ever M16 that came out in the late 50s or early 60s had a you know, synthetic was one of the first rifles to have a synthetic stock on it. Okay. And Colt scrapped their mold about 10 years ago. Oh. And then they teamed up with this company U.S. Ordnance to make this rifle, and they had nowhere to go to get this stock made. So oh. U.S. Ordnance found us online, and we worked with them for it's been. It's been going on for about six months now, but we just had a mold built that just got delivered and it's just being set up and we're going to make these rifle stocks and they're going to look just like the originals. Wow, that's it's, great. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a beautiful mold too. Oh. Um, yeah, we uh, <laughs> we had a hard time making it, but it, the the mold itself is, is beautiful. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. Sure, I'm sure the parts, once we start getting first articles, are going to look great. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So so anyone going on buying a, a, a what would they look for online to buy that that gun? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I would I would suspect they're only making a, about 15,000 of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, a, a classic... Classic a Vietnam era M M16. M16, yeah, right. Yeah. You made the well, stock it, there. it'll be a civilian. I don't think it'll be. Sure. It won't have all the bells and whistles that the military had on it. It'll right. be a civilian operating version of that rifle. Right. right. But that's a great example of, of, of solving a customer's problem uh, with the with the talented people you have and the tools you have and the expertise that you guys yeah, have. Yeah, and it was. There, I don't even. I don't believe we even had any real official prints of this thing. We just had a stock left over from the 60s I wow guess, and and figured out it, it, we kind of reversed uh engineered it and, yeah and made this mold Fantastic. With, with the assistance of some prints but they weren't like you know every, they didn't have every dimension on there we yeah kinda yeah yeah Neat. reverse engineered it um yeah and then you know uh also we're always looking to figure out how to cut costs for our customers and, and pat cut our costs and then pass them on to our customers um, so another project that we're working on right now that's actually going really well is um, we've 
Excuse me, Rob. Some, they're, they're, so, they're cleaning the bottom of the boat right okay. now. And so if, if, we, if we hear any interruptions going on, it's because there's a diver down below oh. scrubbing the bottom of the boat and they're, knocking off barnacles off the hull. Changing, changing your zinc. Changing the zinks out yeah. right now. So I, <laughs> I apologize to our audience who's listening, but we have a little, uh, <laughs> we, have to okay. deal, we have to deal with that when we record on board the boat. <laughs> it's a great recording studio. Oh, good. I'm glad you yeah. like it. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, you. no, 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 no yeah. worries. Um, anyways, we're, <laughs> We're, a lot of times uh, material costs rise over the years, and so we're always keeping our eyes out for alternative materials um, that are more readily available, that are at a cheaper price point. And if we identify one that we think will work good for a customer's product that they've been molding for years, we'll mold them some samples, usually at no charge, and we'll see if they'll, you know, they can get their quality department to accept them, and then we can pass on the cost savings. Um, so that's something we're working with right now with the customer. It's looking like it's, they're going to be approved. Great. Which should be like a 50% cost savings on the material side. Great. So, um, and it's readily available. Yeah. So right now everything in the state, you know, here, every manufacturing is humming along. Right. A lot of our raw material lead times either at metrics and Southwest. So bar stock and castings, metal materials. Right. And then raw materials at Southwest, like pellets and stuff. Those lead times have gone way out because the demand is way up. Because there's so much demand for manufacturing yeah. in the U.S. right now. Well, that's great. Yeah. Well, good. Well, yeah. good. Well, Rob, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I think yeah. you've had a, you have a great story. Your company story is fantastic, and yeah, and uh, nothing but great things in the future for for you, for Southwest, and for Metrics Valve. So okay, Don. Thanks, thanks for, for having me. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening to my company story. I'm your host, Don Burge. If you liked what you heard please leave us a comment and subscribe to hear more of My Company Story on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And go to our website, mycompanystory.com, to find more episodes.